But aren't you not lucky? It's Saturday night. It's Jonathan Ross, and here we are talking about Brexit. Well, you know, but what do they make over in America and in Canada? Uh, what do you make of Brexit? Do you kind of is it this sort of a quaint, weird thing that's going on over here, or are you? Well, no, I, th I mean, for me, it's, it's Trump Brexit. Uh, you're watching a movement for of nationalism and and uh, isolationism, which I think is personally, I, I think is tears at the fabric of, of, of a country uh, and pulls it apart. And so, <laughs> but you're watching it all around the world. You interviewed Trump, how many yeah. years ago, a few years ago? You spent quite yeah, a bit of time with him. six years ago. Did I ask him if he ever wanted to become president? I did not. <laughs> so but it would have was... seemed like a ridiculous question back then, wouldn't it? <laughs> there you go. That was, that was the two of us in Trump Towers. And it was very funny, I remember that very clearly. Funny, which one of his wives were you? I'm trying to remember which one. <laughs> Something next, I'm waiting for the big moment. But it was funny because he came towards me and, you know, gave me this very sort of macho, manly handshake. And I was quite surprised because we'd always heard about the germophobia and how he doesn't like shaking hands. So I was like, oh, I thought you had germophobia. And he's like, no, not with you. I shake hands with you. It's, it's them that I don't shake hands with. Wow. And I'm like, them? Oh, well, the people in your lobby, and he's like, yeah, or the voters, as we now call them, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it was a kind of weird introduction um, to this sort of, you know, billionaire businessman long before any of us realised that he was going to have political intentions. Well, Emily's got a book out, the book, and talks about a meeting with Trump or various other people. It's called Airhead, which is, uh, it's, it's an interesting title that you've called a book about your work, Airhead. Yeah, it's... What is in my head when we're going live on air and everything starts to go wrong? But you're quite hard on yourself in here because you talk about the Trump thing and you, think, and you, you mentioned how he had exaggerated or even openly lied about certain things early on. It was on. so interesting. I mean, some of the things he said, you know, because you're interviewing, I was interviewing him as a sort of, you know, as a business programme. And so he said, Emily, my hotel has the biggest ballroom. We have the biggest ballroom of any hotel anywhere in New York. And I kind of like thought, oh, that's an odd boast. I was like, mm, is there a machismo to do the size of your ballroom, you know? And I went off, <laughs> <laughs> I sort of checked. I was like, oh, that's weird, it isn't. And I said to my producer, well, it isn't actually the biggest ballroom. Do I, do I kind of call him out on it? Do I say that's a lie? And then I was like, that makes me sound weird. Like I've got this obsession about people's ballroom sizes. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, oh I, yeah. <laughs> what is the size of your ballroom really? You know, <laughs> so I kind of left it. And then there was another kind of example where he was saying, you know, I have the greatest number of stories and my, you know, skyscrapers, blah, 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 because there's a way of numbering that you can choose to, you know, you can choose to number your first story, number 16, if you want. You sort of invent the numbers that you want. And so all those little sort of slights of hand. They weren't lies, there was nothing criminal, there was nothing wrong. It was what I thought of it as the time as sort of, you know, maybe that's what celebs do. That's yeah. kind of like, you know, business celeb exaggeration. A sort of harmless exaggeration. It all seemed to be like, oh, honestly, if it makes you feel better to talk about the size of your ballroom, who am I to stand in your way, yeah. you know? So I would kind of go, yeah, whatever. I was waiting for him to invite me to Las Vegas um, to his Miss America beauty pageant. So I just wanted the invite to the next interview. And once I had that, I was like, OK, this is in the bag. But it was only years later I kind of went, oh, OK, he was doing that all along. Yeah. He was doing that all along. But that's how know? we've got into this trouble. Is everyone saying, oh, well, I'll let that pass, I'll right. let that pass, and then you wind up, right. oh, well, hello, he's president. <laughs> you know, Hello. not that you, not that you're responsible, but I, I have to blame someone. <laughs> <laughs> but he... you've, got, you've got three Canadians yeah. here, not not one. Oh, that's oh, you're Canadian as well. I was, I was Canadian born. Yeah. Wow. So n n nobody here is responsible for Trump. Well, Ollie has to be then in that yeah, case. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the chickens' fault. Yeah.